Hello YouTube watchers, Max Seeker here and today I'm making a video about the Garrett Sea Hunter Mark II. Uh, YouTube user Sharp1977 asked me to do a rundown video about the detector. He was thinking about buying one. And I thought, why not? I can make a video about this detector, no problem. Okay. And this is the control housing for the detector. It's pretty beefy, made out of polycarbonate plastic. Uh, pretty bomb proof housing. No way you can break this with normal use. It hasn't got any buttons. Everything is done by these pots, potentiometers. Uh, well, except this one is a switch, but which turns it on and off, but that's in a pot form also. Uh, it has got an elimination knob, but I never use it. Because what I've heard, that doesn't even work. Because this is a pulse induction machine. Uh, so I leave it at zero always. You adjust the threshold when you go in the water to a suitable level. Like you can barely hear it, then it's okay. Uh, I use standard trash elimination. I haven't really tried extensively the discrete trash elimination. This makes the audio of the machine more tolerable and everything sounds the same. Uh, there's no difference between the sound of the targets. The trash, standard trash elimination, you can hear the difference in the targets. Low tones, high tones, a little bit of variation, so you can detect if you have bobby pins and stuff or hair pins. And it says instructions below. And yes, it has pretty good instructions on the control housing itself. So if you need them, you'll always have them with you. Uh, this is the cap for the battery, battery housing, and as you can see, these lines have to match so that it is waterproof. You do not want to over tighten this. At first, it feels like you need to tighten this more. But you really don't. This is the place where you line it and that's okay. So let me open the cover here for you. Uh, this is the cap, nothing, nothing special there. There's an O-ring which must be lubed with silicone grease. That helps it maintain waterproof proofness. And this is a pretty standard battery pack. Eight AA batteries. I'm using rechargeables now, which give this detector really good battery life. The manual says 18 to 22 hours. That's probably pretty accurate. The housing itself is protected, so if this cap fails and water goes in the battery box, it won't go further than that. It has been sealed, so the water does not get in the main electronics housing. 
But if that happens, if the case breaks down for some reason, there is this window here that if that fogs up in inside, you know there's water in the housing and you have to send the detector to Garrett and have some service done to it. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. Because this case is uniform, it has been glued together. It's pretty heavy duty. Okay, so this is the headphone jack and this is what the headphone plug looks like. It is pretty beefy metal construction. It has two pins, so the headphones are pretty much mono headphones, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, this is made of rubber. And the receiving part is rubber too, so that seals it. Seals it somewhat, and then there's this O-ring, which is all also some silicone grease to it to make it totally waterproof. And this screws screws on there quite firmly. Make sure you remove any sand and dirt before you use the connectors to ensure that it stays okay but that's on there really good okay so these are the headphones pretty standard waterproof headphones which come with the detector Nothing really special about these. They work. Some people have said that this cable will break pretty easily, but I don't know. Haven't had any problems yet. These are about $100 a pop, these headphones. So you really don't want to break these. <laughs> the same headphones are used with the Garrett Infinium and the AT Pro. So if you have a Sea Hunter and an AT Pro, you can use the same headphones for both machines, which is a good thing. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the coil. This is the stock 8 inch mono coil, uh, which comes with every Sea Hunter Mark II, and as you can see, I've done a little modifications to it. I added some marine epoxy to the bottom of the coil to make it more resistant to sand abrasions and stuff, because you can't get a coil cover for Sea Hunter 8-inch coil. There just isn't one available. So I got the two, it's like standard epoxy that you paste on the bottom, two part epoxy, which makes this really durable. And you can always add more epoxy when it brushes out here. So it really doesn't, it's really tough stuff. The coil mount is pretty standard. This is quite hefty nylon bolt and this thing is used in every detector pretty much so I don't have to talk anymore about that. This is the connector for the coil. It has four pins and it's pretty much the same, same exact connector as the headphone connector is. Very beefy connector, really good. Sea Hunter also comes with this holster that you can mount or put on this belt that comes with it. So you can hip mount that. 
which takes the weight of the stem. Uh, I personally haven't tested this and I've heard people that didn't like this setup but it's there if you if you like to use it you can mount this on your hip if you are doing longer hunts I think that would be a good thing because it takes the weight off your arm and puts it on your hip so you can do longer hunts uh, also in the package is this shorter lower stem which you can use in the scuba mate assembly so you can make the shaft of the detector very short for scuba diving if you are planning to use this for diving I don't dive so I don't plan ever using this but it's there if you need it. The shaft of the detector is fastened with these nylon bolts. They are all, all are these nylon bolts which can be sometimes a bit flimsy but I really don't have complaints. You just have to re-tighten these time after time. They stick on there pretty good. This arm cuff thing, this gets loose pretty fast because there's so much tension on it when you're detecting and there's only one of these bolts on the cuff. So this one you have to tighten more often. I think I'm going to replace this with a stainless steel bolt and tighten it pretty good so it will stick there. I can also show you the places you can mount the control housing. So you can mount it, I think you can mount it here, right under the cuff. Then you can mount it, I think in here. And of course, on top of the detector but this way of mounting it I didn't like it at all it's so unbalanced that I didn't want to use it for a minute so I have it mounted always in here okay so Here's a better example of how I have it mounted. It's right on the back where the cuff is. This makes it pretty, pretty good balanced detector. You really don't notice the weight in the water. I don't think I really would want to use this detector on land anyway, because it is a water detector for scuba diving and shallow water detecting. This control housing connection system is it's very simple but it's very durable. So this is stainless steel and it goes in the groove. It's two part clip and this is not going anywhere. And it's pretty fast to switch the place of the control housing from here to here if you want to do it. Because of these nylon bolts which have ridges so you can hand tighten these 
and you shouldn't use any tools to tighten those. Okay, so I think you have some idea now that what kind of detector this is. I did a lot of research when I was buying a detector and I was considering the MindLab Excalibur, but it is more expensive detector. It's a VLF detector. This is a pulse induction machine. Uh, the VLF detector might have uh, a lot of trouble in black sand and mineralized soil. But this is a pulse induction machine which doesn't have any of those problems. It never falls, does false signal beeps. Never. It beeps when there's metal underneath the coil and that's it. That's really simple. And uh, that's the thing that I like about this detector is that it's a switch on and go machine. You don't have to do any adjustments to it at all. Switch it on, slightly adjust the threshold if you need to and go. And you will have to dig everything. This thing loves nails and iron in general and hairpins they are a bitch but it also finds all the gold all the silver and all the coins so and for the price I paid little under 600 euros for this and the I think the cheapest Excalibur costs like 900 euros so the, there is a price difference and I've heard that mine lab Excaliburs have had problems with the knobs and other stuff because the housing is very different. This is a uniform piece which you really can't break this unless you use a hammer or something on it. So it's really good mechanical construction. Okay, a little more about the coil. Uh, so this is the 8 inch standard coil. There is available 10 by 14 inch mono coil, which I guess would be useful for really clean beach areas with no trash. It would find even deeper than this does. And this goes deep, really deep. I honestly think this will go deeper than a MindLab Excalibur. What I've read on the net internet. This is a pretty small coil. Roughly the same size as the Xterra 70 coil that I have. It's dead easy to pinpoint with this which is a huge advantage in water. Okay. Uh, I really don't think of anything else to tell you about the detector. Uh, you really should try one of those, one of Sea Hunters and see for yourself if this is the detector for you. It's not for everyone. You have to dig every iron signal. Every iron signal in the water, but the price point and the construction quality is good for the money. So it's up to you to decide what you buy. So goodbye for now.